Hi everyone, this is Chemistry Beyond the Laboratory. What am I trying to do in this lecture? Um, it's basically just an introduction to an overview of the, of the topics that we're going to cover in the course. So let's leap into it. Chemistry Beyond the Laboratory. What does it mean? What does it make you think of? Well, I had to think about this myself and the first thing I did was go to Wikipedia and I typed in chemistry. Well, you know, we'll know what that is, so, but I'll read out the definition. It's a branch of science concerned with the substances of which matter is composed, the investigation of their properties and reactions, blah, blah, blah. But the second one is also interesting, the second definition. It's the complex emotional or psychological interactions between people. And that is actually a large part of chemistry beyond the laboratory. And you'll see why. Chemistry beyond the lower tree. Clearly, chemistry is something that humans do. Something that humans do. Something that humans have done to them. So let's think about that. What are humans? Well, there's a lot of us around. We use a lot of resources, uh, population, and all of those issues lead to concerns about the sustainability of the things that we do. Let's look at the second word in this course, beyond. It's a preposition, adverb. It means at or the f further side of, or happening or continuing after. So have those things in your mind when you think about this topic. Is chemistry beyond mean the oceans? Does it mean the atmosphere? Does it mean the whole earth? Does it mean space? Is it about life, food, fertilizers, pesticides? It's about all of those things really, and more. Chemistry is all around us. It plays a key role in our life and economy. And it's not just about man-made substances. But when we think about anthropogenic substances, those are man-made substances, we come up with a series of questions. Where did that substance come from? How and why was it produced? Where was it released? How did it move around in the environment? What is its chemistry? How fast does it react? How does it react? And more, most importantly, how does it influence living organisms in the earth? That leads us to environmental chemistry. It's the science in which the methods and results of chemistry are applied to processes involving chemical species in the environment. More generally, there are questions such as, who is entitled to use and make things in nature? And to what extent? Are there limits to growth? A rational discussion of these questions. Rational involves the scientific method. That means measurements, not opinions, and results from the physical sciences, as well as the law, economy, and the humanities. Do not ignore these other topics. You cannot do chemistry in isolation without the human considerations.